Hi and welcome to Academic Compliance Academy of Law and Economics. So in this video I'm going to talk about Pareto efficiency in game theory. So Wilfredo Pareto invented this concept of Pareto efficiency when he was studying income distribution. Some call it efficiency, some call it optimality, some call it allocation. But what is it really about? So a Pareto efficient situation is a situation where we have a relationship, it could be two or multiple parties, and we cannot increase the value or the wealth for one party without decreasing the value of another party. When we reach such, such a status, we say that we are in a Pareto efficient situation. So, we can see it up here from the Edgeworth box from microeconomics that when we have two in different curves hitting each other and we cannot move any further without the other parties in different curves kind of move back, well, then we are in the Pareto efficient situation. But to get there, and this is actually the most interesting part, because to get to that point where we really want to be, we can on the way make Pareto improvements. And these are the situations where we actually can improve the relationship between, let's say, two parties, where we improve one's wealth or value without hurting the other party. If that is possible, we should do it because it increases the value of the relationship and that is good in terms of economics. And by doing this, we're talking that we're making a Pareto improvement. We're improving the relationship between the parties. So let's put it into game theory. I put up a two by two matrix, kind of translated the efficiency term up here to saying Pareto efficient equals no player can improve payoff without another player being worse off. So we have two players. Each of them have two strategies. We have a set of strategies that give certain payoffs to each party. Let's start the analysis. We can just start from the strategy AC because there is no rule of where to start because we need to analyze all four conditions. So in AC, each party will get a payoff of two. What we should ask ourselves now is what I highlighted in yellow. Can any of the players gain more in payoff without hurting the other player's payoff? If the answer to that question is yes, then we can make a Pareto improvement and we should thrive to do so. If the answer is no, then we are at a Pareto efficient level and there's nowhere else to go. Not in terms of Pareto efficiency. So let's look at it because we can see that in strategy BC, player one gets a payoff of two and player two gets a payoff of three. So we can actually here make a Pareto improvement if we move from AC to A, no, AC to BC. Because here player two will get one more in payoff without hurting player one. So here we can make an imp uh, Pareto improvement, which we should thrive for to do. Can we make more improvements from here? So now we add BC giving 2.3. And we can see if we move to AD, it will be 5.0, which means that player 2 will go down and player 1 will go up. And the same accounts for strategy BD, where player 1 will get 9 and player 2 will get minus 1. So we cannot really make any more Pareto improvements. Hence, we are at a Pareto efficient level. So we can now state that strategy BC is Pareto efficient. Now we will look at the two last outcomes and that is AD and BD. I already put out the results here because it is very clear that AD gives player 1 5, player 2 0. We cannot move anywhere without hurting either player 1 or player 2. Therefore it is also a Pareto efficient um, 
strategy and the same accounts for strategy BD. So in this game, there's actually only one strategy that does not equal a Pareto efficient status, and that is strategy AC. So we have to remember when we're talking about efficiency, everyone says efficiency all around the world, all the time. Effectiveness, efficiency, we have to remember which type and also remember the critiques because as you saw in the game, well, sometimes player one could get nine and player two would get like minus one. And isn't that better than both of them getting two? Well, yes, there's some, but this is this is a critique on Pareto efficiency, that it does not take account of the actual distribution. It it investigates if we can enhance it without hurting anyone. So can we make the relationship better? But it does not go in and analyze a kind of a fair distribution, equal rights, social standards, etc. So that will always be the critique on Pareto. And we might have to look elsewhere to find an efficiency uh, term that can kind of grasp this um, element that Pareto does not. So this was just a video on Pareto efficiency in game theory. Stay tuned, subscribe to this channel and let's talk much more about law and economics.